Okay, what you got, sir? Elephant arm. <laughs> Things that you're going to need, uh, or that your people that you sell to, you still want traditional concrete tools. Uh, so square trowels, pull trowels, skip trowels, or margin trowels, tooling equipment. Uh, depending, uh, especially if you're dealing with public works, uh, they're going to have probably all the tools. You guys don't have to be a concrete house. You don't. You have to have the products that are specific to this product to place. Look at that. As far as I'm doing an overlay, I want it flowable, which we're going to do today. If I'm doing a vertical and overhead, I want to mix less water. I'll let it sit in the bucket till it stiffens up. Then I can literally hand pack it. Oh, we're going to fix this. Seriously, we're going to fix that. Okay. You did. Yeah, so uh, water for us, if I'm doing big overlays, I want to be exact on my water every time. So what we're doing today is 1.5 gallons, which is our standard high water overlay mix. So the nice thing about knowing exactly what water is, is it makes the mixing process super fast. I don't have to slowly add water to get the right consistency. I can add all the water at once and the mixing process is super fast. This is the Colomix XO55 Duo. You guys did not get these, but we can get them. Yeah, you will have to have these when in the stock. Project starts. Not because we think it's a great mixer for mixing elephant armor, but we mandate it for mixing elephant armor. You need something with a lot of shear, and this has a lot of shear. I'm gonna try and be nice and neat. I'm always gonna have lots of extra five gallon buckets, usually a couple extra with water in them because I wanna keep my tools clean. Amen to that. Yeah, tools clean are very important. Yes, they are. Uh, no concrete product likes a lot of water because you'll pull cream to the top. Since this is all cream, it's not a big issue. I'm not worried about pulling cream to the top. But I do pull fiber to the top if I overwork it, if I use too much water. So you'll see we'll use a minimum, minimal amount of water. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this very wet. I'm going to dump it onto here. I'm going to leave some in the bucket. And then once this stiffens up a little bit, I'm going to coat the box in a very thin amount of material. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to kind of show you how fast it goes with a reasonably warm day in the direct sun. So once I place this and roll it out with my loop roller and I get it to the height that I want, then I'm going to wait a little bit and then I'm going to put a smooth finish on half of it uh, with the magic trowel. We're doing large overlays like Thank the job you, that you guys are about to supply for. Perfect, Mikey. This is an 18 inch loop roller versus the nine inch. This has I got can. a gauge on the end of the quarter inch. So if I'm a uh, contractor estimating a job and I know I need a quarter inch, I have a quarter inch gauge on there. I know I'm gonna get 20 square feet of bag at a quarter inch. Uh, this is an actual magic trowel. We don't brand magic trowels. We brand another kind of squeegee trowel. It's got a flat face to it, so you can go both directions, both ways, or you need things specific to this product. Squeegee trowels, absolutely. Mixing oh, yeah. buckets, absolutely. I'm going to say the expensive drill, absolutely. 100% on the 18 and the 9 inch rollers, the gauges, and then the what we call Hulk frames for the ex extendable frames. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to talk about primers too. Primers are the number one failure for all repair mortars going into the ground. There's two types of primer. There's the acrylic primer, which you typically see as white. Uh, like a concrete glue. The acrylic primers, when you put them down before they fully dry, you have to place material. It has to be tacky. If you don't, and you let it dry, especially in the Florida heat, and I place material on it, it's a bond breaker. It's not going to stick. The other primer we manufacture is the pink primer, and we, the reason we made it pink is because you can tell it's not white. Uh, that's the overlay primer. This is a polyvinyl acetate. It's pretty much the primer you're going to sell. 90% is going to be this overlay primer. Uh, this primer, if I'm doing an overlay, I paint it on the surface, it has to fully dry. If I place material on this wet, bond breaker. So you can see primers are a bit, you know, you just got to know what you're doing with a the primer. They are. So the other thing you're always going to want is at least one or two 
spray bottles, pump up spray bottles with water. That's where you put Zetro fluid down with. Yeah, this is uh, one of the, well, any spray. So another major thing you got to think about with this product is do not ever, ever get it on your hands or breathe in the dust. <coughs> Can't stop. Gotta stop. People got the wise ass. To do, I always want to take my dry powder, put it in my mixing vessel. If I'm doing large jobs, I'm doing two bags at a time. That's 100 pounds of material in here. The beauty of this machine is it can mix two bags in about a minute. Uh, I'm not going to tell you all the horror stories, but let's just say that I've burned out at least a half a dozen $200 very powerful grills. Trying I'll to just fluff it up, especially if it's an older bag, it's a little stiffer. I want to make it nice and fluffy. All right, exothermic means it's very susceptible to heat and sun. This is an exothermic product. It's a super fast setting product. If I'm working in direct sun and I'm working in heat, heat's not bad today, it's going to kick, cook fast. So I got to move fast. If I move this four feet, I can do a lot. So we're going to move pretty fast. Once I dump this onto this and roll it out, I'm going to actually move what left is left in here because in volume it will create heat. If I don't get it out of the bucket fairly quickly, it'll start to stiffen up very quickly, which I want it to do, but I'll move this in here so I have some working time because I want to kind of play with this stuff out here before I coat the box. So because I know exactly what my water is, uh, and you'll see these masons and concrete guys that'll put some powder in, put some water in, powder, water, powder, water. It's like, what are you doing? It's all about labor. So, Mike, when you're ready, you can dump the whole thing in there. Yeah. All in, baby. Now I know exactly what my water is. In a technique when it's something like a drill, like this, with a powerful drill, if I turn my drill this way, and I hit into the wall, I can actually break through it. So I always want to keep my drill straight up and down, working around the outside. And the reason you want these buckets is because they're flat on the bottom. Flat on the bottom. You're not going to have any dry powder in the crevice. So this is really cool, but this is good. And then I always want to have my bucket, my other bucket, close to me where the drill is, this is my washout bucket for cleaning tools. And when I get done spinning this, I'll drop it in the bucket, spin it, and voila, I don't have to worry about cleaning my blades. And if you don't, and it dries, you will snap the gears in the drill. Yeah. That's how strong it'll be. That's been known to happen. So you see how flowable that is? That is absolute maximum water. I would never go higher than that. And what I'm going to do... tried to trowel this right now, it's going to grab it and pull it. What this allows me to do is to move a lot of product, kind of like an epoxy or urethane. Oh, I was going to do Florida. Pick another state now. <laughs> What's the county look like? We'll make something kind of cool. Freeform art. So I'm just going to kind of estimate a quarter inch. One of the things you want to do when you're putting this out and you want it dead flat, I'm just using the weight of my roller here because I've gotten so loose. I don't want to have any divots or perforations because when I put the magic crawl on it, I don't want a divot. I want it dead flat. Again, that's a timing thing. Because it's warm out, this is going to go pretty quick.
Come on, son. So now we're free my magic trial. And now I can put I'm still a little early. It's still too wet. And I'll show you what happens. I'll wait a little bit longer and I'll get a dead flat. Hopefully. It always looks good at nighttime. Did I ask for your comment, Mikey? Good. After a couple of Mai Tais. Oh, Mai Tai, that sounds good. Never had one. I mean, not for the last seven hours. And so now I'm not going to cheat. You guys can make sure I don't put more than a quarter inch on this. Not that I ever cheat. Unless I know I can get away with it. So when I do the, the vertical, it has to stiffen up a little bit or I won't get it to stay on the sidewall. Are you going to put it in? about three sixteenths, a little less than a quarter. So you can see I can now get a much smoother finish on it because the timing's there, got a little stiffness to it. It's still really wet, so I'm literally just using the weight of the magic draw. Now, if I wait to where I get initial set where it's really firm, and I do the same thing with even more water, I can make it like a steel trawl finish. Like this floor as opposed to this floor. This is probably a close match to that now. A little wet, but not bad. Any bakers in here? Any? <laughs> Looks like you're frosting the cake. I am frosting the cake right now. <laughs> <Should I? laughs> Don't say it. Again, guys, make sure I'm not cheating and put more than a quarter on here. Your tape measure is different than ours. <laughs> yeah. You're pretty good at iron. Quarter of what? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just trying to get, even if I only have like a sixteenth in certain places, I'm relying on the fact that this product is so strong with all that fiber that even if I have a void space, everything around it is going to hold it together. That's prettier. This is about the time where you can actually get a trowel and put it on the surface and get it really smooth without pulling the fiber up. Yeah, we actually, if you look at the bag, we actually stamp a little green leaf on it. There's very little, very little Portland cement in this so that's where your co2 your what we call embodied energy is and this has very little of it it's a very green technology very weak this actually cures from the inside out so i'm not really worried about getting a curing compound on it but you always should and for the first say half hour after placement once it starts to stiffen up 
I really want to get one kind of initial little bit of water on it. Then once it turns white, and you'll be able to tell when this is cured, because the color is going to change from this to probably lighter than this. Then you know it's cured. That does its uh, removing the water and gaining strength. Cement starting to actually set. And this, you can see with the volume, it's zero slump now. What I'm going to do with these? Make some balls. I'm making balls. The massive mm -hmm. amount of hydration is done, uh, and it's a strong. It's not as strong as it'll get. It'll probably only be about 1,500 to 2,000 psi. But I'll be able to take it with that massive tensile strength, and I'll throw it up in the air 50, 60 feet, and it should bounce. Huh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> High school and circus. Yeah. Let's do something fun here. Right. You can get that absolute steel trowel, super smooth finish on it. So when you do a countertop, obviously not on plastic, uh, place it on the countertop, it's called reverse cast, you flip it over and it is dead smooth. So if I drop this, it's going to shatter. Uh, then we're going to pre-stress this for you guys. I think this is probably pretty enough for you guys to keep around. I figured you liked well, watching you me sweat. You stand in the shade and leave that in the sun. <laughs> well, now he's got to work on Cheered that right there because I was a little early. Yeah. Bendable concrete. Boom. So I would normally wait a little longer, but to show doing that to concrete. Exactly. It's polyvinyl alcohol fiber. One in the world. One of the things they do to show tensile strength is they'll take a block, six inches by six inches by 12 inches, take a big plate, and they just smash it. And what that does with normal concrete, as soon as you get to a certain load, it will just explode. What this stuff does is it'll just displace a little bit, but the fibers hold it together. It's called a failure, but we don't have structural failure. So this, we have cracks, but even with those cracks, it is so strong you're not going to come apart. That's okay. tensile strength. He's going to come tomorrow morning. Well, Still early. I don't really want to mess with it. <laughs> no. so, Everything else is gone. Huh? It worked. Huh? So if I stepped with like a heel right in the center, I could probably break it. But that is just a thin amount of material. Still wet, still curing, not nearly at its strength. And I can stand on it. Stuff like made out of Wolverine claws. <laughs> <laughs> and you can feel how light this is. So you know how much material's on it. Yeah. When we would mix it, we'd mix it and it'd look okay and then suddenly it would just it would just slump out. We would pour it out. And guess what it looked like? Big pile of elephant shit. <laughs> Literally. It's like, ah, oh, look an elephant came and took a dump here. So we finally commercialize 15 years later, and I'm trying to come up with a name, Flexcrete, oh, it's a bendable concrete, bendable concrete. Everything is taken. There is not a single Crete name out there. Oh, water bottle Crete, oh, it's taken. So we circle back to, well, we used to call it elephant shit. I wonder if that's marketable. Elephant shit, armor. So we realized it doesn't sell. So we got rid of the shit part and just went with armor. I think that was a good move. And that is, <laughs> yeah. and then I figured, well, once it gets really popular, and it is now, we have people all over the country, yeah, we, and guess what they say? Hey, I heard about that elephant shit. 
<laughs> it's like, well, you don't know how funny that is to me because that's what we used to call it.